Einstein thought that the beginning of the universe, the Big Bang, created all of space and all of time at once in a big whole something. So every point in the past and every point in the future are just as real as the point of time you feel yourself in right now. Einstein believed that literally. One of his best friends died and he wrote a letter to this person's wife talking about how his friend still exists. Time is a landscape. And if you had the right perspective on the universe, you would see all of it laid out in front of you, all past, present, and future as a whole thing. And he said, you know, your husband, my friend, is just over the next hill. He's still there. We can't see him where we are now, but we are on this landscape with him, and he still exists just as much as he ever has. Einstein believed that you right now have been dead for trillions of years, that you haven't been born yet, that everything that's happened to you, if you could get the right perspective on the universe, you could see all at once. Death is, in some ways, unacceptable. I mean, it's, it's just an astonishing fact of our being here, that we, that we die, but I think worse than that is that if we, if we live long enough, we lose everyone we love in this world. I mean, do people die and disappear, and we are, we are left with this stark mystery uh, there's just, just the sheer not knowing of what happened to them. And into this void, religion comes rushing with a very consoling story saying, nothing happened to them, they're in a better place and you're going to meet up with them after you die. You're going to get everything you want after you die, death is an illusion. Um, there's no question that that, if you could believe it, that would pay emotional dividends. I mean, there's, not, there's no other story you can tell somebody who's just lost her daughter to cancer, say, to make her feel good. You know, it, it, you know it, is, it is consoling to believe that the daughter was just taken up with Jesus and everyone's going to be reunited in a few short years. Um, there's no replacement for that. There doesn't need to be a replacement for that. I think we have to be, we have to just witness the cost of that. I mean, there are many obvious costs of that way of thinking. Um, one is we just don't teach people how to grieve. You know, I mean, religion is the kind of the antithesis of teaching your children how to grieve. You, you tell your child that, that you know, grandma's in heaven uh, and there's nothing to be sad about. Um, that's religion. It would be better to, to equip your child for the reality of this life, which is, you know, we, death, is, death is a fact and we don't know what happens after death. And I'm not pretending to know that you get a dial tone after death. I don't know what happens after the, the, the physical brain dies. I don't know what the relationship between consciousness and the physical world is. Um, I don't think anyone does know. Now, I think there, there are many reasons to be doubtful of naive conceptions about the soul and about this idea that you could just migrate to a, a better place after death. But uh, I simply don't know about what, uh, I don't know what I believe about death. Um, and I don't think it's necessary to know in order to live uh, as sanely and ethically and happily as possible. There's hardly anything bigger than offering immortality or the afterlife. Because, so here's the problem. We, we are all aware that death is real because we see it all around us. 100 billion people have lived before us. They're all gone. Not one of them has come back. Not even Jesus, in my opinion, but that's a different video. Um, and yet, you, can't, you cannot conceive of what it's like to be dead. Because if I asked you, picture yourself dead, what do you see? You know, most people say, well, I see, you know, myself there at the funeral in the coffin and, you know, my loved ones are, you know, hopefully grieving. Uh, and there I am. No, you wouldn't see that. You wouldn't see anything because to see anything, you have to be conscious. To conceive of anything, you have to be a sentient being. You have to be conscious. And if you're dead, you don't have any of that. You're, you're just, really, death is just nothing. And, and the whole idea of the afterlife is fairly new. I mean, the ancient Hebrews their idea of the afterlife was nothing. You're just just nothing. You're just gone. That's it. There's no place to go with angels and flowers and whatever. It's just nothing. You know, all that was added on centuries later, and uh, you know, and probably for socio-political reasons. You know, offer the peasants something nice so that they'll keep building our pyramids or whatever. You know, so. Um, you know, again, we can't conceive of what it's like to be dead, and yet we see it all around us, so this creates something of a paradox that we have to resolve in our minds. Most people resolve it by thinking, well, I'm not actually going to die. Uh, I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to live forever. 
or I'm going to accept Jesus or whatever, and I'm going to heaven. Yeah, okay, yeah, but what if you're wrong? That's, you know, it's, not a, it's not a Pascal's wager where you can say, well, I have nothing to lose and everything to gain, because which religion and their version of the afterlife is the right one? Which one are you going to pick? You know, well, the Christians, we're the right ones. Yeah, well, there's a billion Muslims who disagree with you. You know, they don't accept Jesus as a savior. They don't think he was even the Messiah or the Son of God. Okay, so now what? You know, they, and they believe just as strongly as you do. So what if your God is the wrong one? Your your version is the wrong theory, and they have the right one. You pick, you wasted your whole life investing on this idea, and, and you turned out to be wrong. Why not jettison the whole idea entirely and appreciate the here and now, because that's all we have, whatever is in the hereafter.